Hey everybody, uh, Pastor Hans here, and this week on The Daily Dose, we're talking about family matters. We're talking about the sorts of things that all of us face as family. And today, I'm going to talk about a tough one. It's affected my life. Maybe it's affected your life. We're going to talk about divorce. And we're going to ask that question, how do we help our kids as we navigate through divorce? <music> Hey everybody, we're talking today about divorce and how is it that we help our kids navigate this? Because as adults, as we navigate divorce, I've been divorced in my life, uh, it's hard enough for us. I was thinking today about a passage from the Bible that speaks to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 goes like this. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If you've ever been through divorce, it is a gong show to say the least. So the question is, how do we help our kids when we ourselves are grieving? How do we help our kids navigate divorce? I borrowed some language that I think is really helpful from the people at Love and Logic. They've written a number of books on parenting, but this is a really good article, Love and Logic. They suggest that there are a number of things that we as parents can do as we help our kids navigate divorce. The first is probably the most important one. It's something I think we need to do all the time as parents, but especially during divorce. And that's this, we need to stay rooted by clarifying our own values. We need to stay rooted by clarifying our own core values and really everything else that comes with parenting as we navigate divorce really, to be honest, falls under that. We have to stay focused on who we are amid the chaos that is called divorce. Amid figuring out how much time does my kid spend at dad's or mom's and how much time do they spend with us. Amid having to move, to separate possessions, to figure out schedules. Amid all that chaos, the most important thing you can do for your kids, parents, is this. Stay rooted. Stay rooted in who you really are. Every year, we take a trip up to Lake of the Woods, and there uh, we rent houseboats. We take our kids here at the church up, and it's this huge lake. And every time uh, we're getting our little training as to how to navigate uh, the lakes of northern Minnesota in houseboats, uh, they always say this, when you get on big water, make sure you pick a point off in the distance and drive straight towards it. Keep your eye on that island, that buoy, whatever it might be. And it's the same for us as parents as we navigate, as we navigate this thing called divorce. We got to stay focused. We got to stay rooted. Who am I? What are my values? When we stay rooted and we clarify our values, we give our kids the greatest thing we possibly can. And that's stability. Well, the first thing we can do is to stay rooted. The second thing we can do for our kids is this. We can continue to provide the anchor of loving discipline. We can continue to provide an anchor of loving discipline. Folks, you know this if you're going through a divorce or you've been through a divorce and you have kids. We feel guilty. Man, it is so natural. You feel guilty that you've drug your kids through this painful, painful time. And what ends up happening is that we sort of loosen our discipline. We become sort of permissive parents. And we allow things to happen in our kids' life that we wouldn't otherwise allow. You see, what our kids need more than anything else amid the chaos of divorce, they need loving limits and they need loving accountability with an emphasis on loving. 
They need to know that we are there for them. But there are limits. There is accountability. But doing so in a loving way. Again, this provides stability amid the storms of a divorce. The second most important thing you can do is to continue to provide that anchor of loving discipline. The third thing I want to suggest that you can do for your kids is you can let your child's relationship with their other parent be their own relationship. Let me say that again. You can let your child's relationship with their other parent be their own. You know this. This happens out of anger, out of frustration. Far too often, parents sabotage their kid's relationship with their other parent. They hear stories of what's happening at dad's house or at mom's house. And what do we do? We blow up. We freak out and we sabotage their relationship. You see, what I want to suggest is that you avoid those battles that you think are so important. But to be honest, they're not winnable. Because in the end, the only thing you're doing is you're forcing your child to choose which parent they're going to align with. In the end, they're not going to align with anyone. They're going to feel lost. They're going to feel alone. So here's what you got to do. Just listen and don't freak out. Huh? Let your child's relationship with their other parent be their own. And last but certainly not least, number four is this. Help your child grieve. Help your child grieve by allowing them to grieve. You see, I think what we do as parents, especially in this day and age, is we want to coddle our kids. We want to protect our kids from feeling pain. We, we want to help them make it feel as though it's all okay. This is exactly what should have happened. Parents, don't try and make it all okay. You see, your kids need to grieve because there's a loss, a painful one. I mean, it's sort of like dropping that ceramic uh, 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 cookie jar on the ground. And you pick up all the pieces and you take super glue and you try and put it all back together. But it never looks the same. It looks like a glued uh, up cookie jar. You see, don't pretend, don't try and make it all okay. Recognize that it's not okay, that there's a lot of hurt and pain and grief. What your kids need most of all isn't you fixing the situation. What they need is your listening ear. What they need is your loving empathy. 1 Corinthians 13 talks about the sort of love that I think we all need, but our kids especially need in the midst of divorce. The passage says this, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of rights and wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, it always perseveres. What your kids need is your love, that you would stay anchored, that you would stay rooted in that love, that love of God. And then you'd let that love overshadow all that they're experiencing, that that love would be the anchor that would give them the stability as you walk through these trying, trying times. Folks, if you're going through a divorce, here's what we want you to know. We get it. It's really hard. I've been through a divorce. Pastor Angie's been through a divorce. We want you to know we love you. God loves you. And we're here. We want to walk with you. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to The Daily Dose. If you're watching on Facebook, you can share it. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the bell so you get notifications. If you're watching on Cable Access 181, why don't you invite a friend to watch with you tomorrow? Have a good one.